Welcome back. Tulsi Gabbard fired back at her own party following Nancy Pelosi's introduction of a new set of rules for Congress, which included a provision to honor all gender identities by changing pronouns to be more gender neutral. Gabbard argued that removing gendered terms from House language defies basic established science and does not even empower women. Malik, what are your thoughts on removing gender from Congress? We're living during a time where we're supposed to be lift, you know, caring for women, lifting women up, acknowledging that there are things that women face that women, men unfortunately don't. And now, but now what we have in the House is that this push for gender neutrality in our language, not gender equality in our laws, but in our language. It's absolutely ridiculous, but it's similar to what the Democrats are supporting when they support this notion of the um, trans transgender athletes competing as I, I get the, I'm sorry, I get the whole mix up wrong, but men, men people who were men competing now as Male women. to female transitioning men, to, yeah. Yeah, see, I, you see how you just get it all confused. But I yeah. think it's ridiculous. You know, I'm actually looking forward to uh, Representative Gabbard joining the Republican Party. <laughs> right. <laughs> Donna, what do you think about this? Oh, this is just more identity politics on hyper yep. <laughs> steroids. Um, they, they want to demonize anyone that doesn't agree with them. They got to figure out a way to keep people under control. And so they have this notion that anybody that says anything is going to be afraid. You know, they have that a man and a woman. A man <laughs> actually has nothing to do with gender. <laughs> so be it. But right. they're even trying to, not only are they trying to change history, but they're trying to turn, change people's culture and language right. it's just this effort to like get keep this kind of uh they're confusing everybody thing, yeah this hierarchy everybody. that you don't get what you need right after originally planning to block president trump from posting on facebook and instagram for 24 hours ceo mark zuckerberg said the blocks have been extended indefinitely and for at least the next two weeks until the peaceful transition of power is complete wow Preston, what's your take on this? It plays directly into the last topic. And in the coming robot takeover, robots have no genders. <laughs> okay, so this is about, honestly, big tech. And this is, do you have the, the current Ingsoc manual? I, mean, I know the words that we're allowed to use keep getting smaller and smaller, yeah. right? And so this is about preparing humans for the coming robot takeover where and dehumanizing human beings. So we're I'm, focused on fighting each other as opposed to uh, unifying together to make sure we have a humanistic, renaissance, Christian ethos at the center of our country. And big tech's helping. I'm just going to say, I cannot wait to see what social media does with that clip. <laughs> well, All right. Preston is double plus good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hate around a lot of technology <laughs> entrepreneurs. They think about the robotization no, no. Of, of America. But Preston I mean, Mays on OAN says robots are taking over the world. But I mean, 1984, this is, yeah. this is Orwellian, literally, you know, the control of language and what your reference uh, is double plus good. It is the, the <laughs> sickest form of, you know, first of all, this language trick, it's a game. It's a PR stunt. It harms women. Let's be clear. Period. It harms women. Now, anything else you want to say about it, whether this is Tulsi Gabbard, she's probably elevated her status among normal, regular, average Americans ten times over her primary. She's a real Democrat. Her Democrat she just believes the in Democratic college. Yeah has actually been increased as far as the stature is concerned for yeah. having enough sense to say, wait a minute, this is really sick word games and it actually harms women in the long run. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right, it is time for the lightning round. We've got three minutes to get through as many questions as we can. The panelists have 10 seconds each to answer and we'll see how many questions we can get through. Okay, first question. Did the polls get it right about the Georgia Senate runoff? Malik. Yes, the polls did get it right about the Georgia Senate runoffs. Okay. Preston. Of course, polls always are right. Didn't you know that? <laughs> polls are a joke. They're not real. <laughs> They're fake polls. I, I just don't buy into any of it. I do think they were fake polls. But Okay, next question. Does a 50-50 split in the Senate give Democrats the power? Link. Well, th what the 50-50 split does actually gives Democrat a simple majority because the vice president can actually um, be the tie-breaking vote. So it does give Democrats a simple majority. Preston. I'm calling on patriots to run for office and to purge the party of rhinos because with friends like Republicans who don't support President Trump and the populist America First agenda, who even needs the Democrats? 
discretionary Republicans throw it to Dem control? I say no, not every Democrat is from a coastal community. There are some that come from regular communities like Joe mentioned. They're not going to go for this Green New Deal. They're not going to go for stacking the Supreme Court. Not every Democrat, uh, even though they seem insane, but not every Democratic senator is crazy. On, on that note, are we still going to have a two-party system? Yes, I think we are. Okay. I think we are. Answer's complicated. As a 15-year veteran of political campaigns, the parties now are, are owned by the state, and the state runs the political primary process. So it's very diff difficult, difficult and tough to un un disentangle that system. So I think the Patriots' best chance is to uh, hijack the Republican Party and then to support more RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbards, and the Democratic Party. We haven't had a two-party system in 20 years. <laughs> Political elite versus the rest of America is what there, I've been saying. There's going to be at least two parties. Listen, the, the grassroots people are going to take over the Republican parties. The Republican establishment is going to leave because they've already left, but just not officially. We'll have at least two parties. This is the, the great shift, the great reset of political parties. Okay, uh, last question. Is the political establishment creating an alternative reality with their narrative? Yes, they always do. <laughs> this is no, always. We're already living in a PKD sci-fi future. At this point, it's gotten so extreme that they're breaking people out like Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> you have good references yeah. today, very good references. Yes, absolutely. They're frantic to do so. Yes, I think so too. But it's not working. Listen, they have this notion in their head that we live in this Superman industry. Most patriots, most conservatives, they think for themselves. We might have leaders, but the whole thing is not to be micromanaged. All right, don't go anywhere. When we come back from the break, we'll view this week's panel choice and see which topics that they thought were important. We'll be right back.